Welcome back. Right now, all eyes on Georgia as we await the possible fourth criminal indictment of Donald Trump. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis has signaled charges could come as soon as this week related to the ex-president's alleged attempt to overturn Georgia's 2020 election. And just a few minutes ago, a former state senator and former state representative who were both subpoenaed in the case were spotted at the Fulton County Courthouse. And we've learned at least two witnesses have been notified to testify before the grand jury tomorrow, meaning this sprawling and years-long investigation may be coming to a conclusion. NBC News correspondent Blaine Alexander is live outside the Fulton County Courthouse. Also with us, Greg Bluestein, uh, political reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and Gwen Keyes Fleming, former district attorney in neighboring DeKalb County. Thanks all for joining. Blaine, we're seeing some activity at the courthouse this morning. What do we know? Anna, we've been outside of this courthouse for the better part of three hours since the early part of this morning. And you're right, things are clearly ramping up. We're seeing a lot of activity. We have been watching both outside and inside the courthouse. We've seen two notable people, people that we know have received subpoenas from the DA's office to appear before the Fulton Grand Jury. We saw them enter uh, and, and walk kind of toward the DA's offices in this kind of sprawling complex here. So what that tells us is, yes, that's really the clearest indication that she is beginning to present her case today before a grand jury. Those two former lawmakers that you see right there on your screen, Jen Jordan and uh, B. Wynn, both of them are a former Democratic lawmakers, but the significance to this case is that they were in presentations that Rudy Giuliani made before a, a number of state lawmakers, a panel of state lawmakers back in 2020, where he espoused a number of since debunked claims about Georgia's elections and, and claiming fraud. We do know that that is something that Fonnie Willis is looking into. So their presence here, the fact that they were subpoenaed, lets us know that that's going to be part of her pre presentation to a grand jury. The other two people that we're watching that we know were subpoenaed were uh, George Sheedy, an independent journalist, along with Jeff Duncan, the former lieutenant governor here in the state of Georgia. What that tells us is that, one, she, of course, is looking into the slate of fake electors. George Sheedy, remember, is the journalist who stumbled upon that kind of meeting of the fake electors in the Georgia Capitol. And and uh, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan can certainly speak to Trump and his allies pressuring uh, state lawmakers to overturn the election results here in Georgia. So we know that they're slated to come tomorrow. We've known that a case of this scope will likely take two full days to present. She's presenting before Grand Jury A that meets on Monday and Tuesday. So we are officially on indictment watch here in Fulton County, Anna. And Gwen, we know there was a special grand jury that did a lot of the investigative work here over the course of many months. My understanding is this grand jury is then presented with their conclusions and the key evidence. Can you expand upon that? Take us inside the courtroom leading up to a vote on potential charges. What's going to happen? Sure. Well, let me first explain. The special grand jury was just investigative. They could not return any kind of indictment. Their job was to collect as much facts and evidence as possible and come up with recommendations. Now that D.A. Willis has that, most likely she will have one or two or more of her investigators summarize that evidence and also supplement it with actual testimony from uh, the witnesses that you just talked about in terms of the former uh, members of the Georgia House and the Georgia Senate. So what will happen, each of these witnesses, including her investigators, would be sworn in. Uh, they would have the opportunity to uh, describe what they know, usually in answers to the district attorney's questions. The grand jurors themselves will be able to get to ask any questions that they might have. Uh, if we get to tomorrow where all testimony is closed and the grand jurors have no further questions or don't want to hear from any other witnesses, uh, the DA will close the evidence. All of her staff will leave the room. The grand jurors will then begin deliberations. Uh, and if we see indictments, it's because 12 or more of them agree that there's sufficient evidence for the case to move forward. It's really interesting that the, the grand jurors get to ask questions as well of those witnesses who are testifying before them. Greg, you have some new reporting about the possibility of racketeering charges against Trump and his allies in this investigation. What can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, well, District Attorney Fannie Willis is an expert in racketeering charges. She's brought them successfully involving Atlanta Public Schools cheating case about a decade ago, and she's hired experts to build out that case in Georgia. Now, Georgia has its own racketeering charge that is a little bit more expansive than the federal charges, so we expect that. We expect these, these two days of hearings to be, uh, D.A. Fleming just mentioned the special grand jury, which took eight months, involved about 75 or so witnesses. This is not going to be uh, calling all those witnesses back. This will be sort of like a highlight reel of some of the most important, most compelling witnesses that came before the special grand jury. And some of them will be asked to to to, to help present a case or help build a case about racketeering charges. Um, others could, could be involving uh, fake electors, uh, involvements down in rural Georgia with Coffee County in an attempt to, uh, to, to copy election data down there. And of course, as we heard earlier, those two state lawmakers who were directly involved in those legislative hearings where they live fact-checked pro-Trump conspiracy theories that were promoted by Rudy Giuliani and some some other uh, pro-Trump uh, uh, lawyers at that legislative com yeah. committee hearing in the state capitol. But, 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 Greg, explain why the racketeering charges could apply here. It sounds like that would mean a, a lot of people could be facing charges, that this indictment could be quite large. Yeah, all those issues that I just mentioned could be wrapped into a potential racketeering charge okay. as the DA looks to build an expansive case. This is why this case is so different from some of the other indictments we've seen. First of all, of course, they're state charges, not federal. But but second, uh, she's looking at a wide orbit of, of Donald Trump's allies. I mean, nearly 20 people got, got at least at least 18 people that we know of got potential target letters. And so this could all play into potential racketeering charges as as the DA, Fonnie Willis, tries to build a case showing that uh, this was a, a complicated, a complex plot by Donald Trump to overturn Georgia's election results. Gwen, you know DA Fonnie Willis personally. Trump has been stepping up his attacks against her. We know she's been receiving vulgar and threatening messages. What do you want people to know about Fonnie Willis? And how do you think she's approaching this moment and this historic case? First of all, she's the consummate professional. Uh, she is not going to be distracted from the oath that she took uh, as DA, which means she has indicated that she will investigate and pursue charges without fear, favor, or affection. Uh, and so she's going to move forward no matter how disturbing uh, the attacks or threats are. The other thing is, as a lawyer licensed in Georgia, she's following her rules of ethics. And so, again, that combination, I would suggest, gives the uh, residents of Fulton County and really folks around the country a comfort in knowing that she is not looking at this as a partisan matter. She is looking at this squarely through the lens of what are the facts and then applying the law to those facts. She is looking at it through the lens of ensuring that she can protect the integrity of the case and obviously the defendant's rights. That is something that all prosecutors try to do. And so again, we need to wait and see how the grand jury will evaluate the evidence that they're presented. But DA Willis is focused uh, and she is not going to be uh, taken off of her uh, plan to ensure that if any wrongdoing was done, she's going to ensure that those that did it be held accountable. I mean, it seems like there's a lot, a lot on her shoulders right now. But she's, I have often said that she was called for a time such as this. She is a tenacious prosecutor. She is very familiar uh, with RICO statutes, much like Greg mentioned before. She is seasoned. Uh, she has worked in that office and with those judges for a number of years. Uh, and again, she is, uh, this is what she is, has been prepared for.